to look at where the government is investing. And habitually, governments of this nature have not invested in the north. And we'd like to see that investment in order for us to thrive and grow and develop and to, to put the money where the mouth is and put the, put the investments where it should be. Alex, should I come back on that one? Yeah, I'm going to say that on Because I've seen really important points in terms of how we're going to gear up for the future. Any further questions or comments, Jeff? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Yeah. The future is simple. So was email for me a few years ago. It still is. It's, uh, we've only been the last mile, and you mentioned people like uh, Amazon, whether drone delivery is a consideration. Um, you know, it, it is something that these big organisations are looking at. Congestion of various other things, and whether there's anything the drone delivery within, particularly within city centres. Drones is part of this and requires a thought of government, but that's what we need to have a drink now. So we don't need to do including aspects of that. I think it's an opportunity that we should say that, Jack, because we do genuinely need to be thinking about those kind of things. So much so, that our kind of peer body um, in the West Midlands, transport for the West Midlands, they've just unveiled uh, new liveries for each mode of transport. So the local trains there are going to have a specific livery, the local buses are going to have a specific livery, and their trams are going to have a specific livery. As part of that rebrand, they've also got a new brand for drones as well. So you never know, it does need to be something perhaps needs to have it. Uh, think about it in the, the fullness of that. Um, any further comments, Francis? Um, they are now um, trying to bring plastics in as a fuel because they're already doing it in replace of tarmac using plastic. And what they're doing is they're putting it in little tiny molecules which will last six times as long as tarmac. Okay, yeah, that's, just, I was just to respond to that, so. Yeah, we'll take that on board. Okay. No, I, I think what we've got here is a really good basis of a, uh, a response. On a personal level, I would love to see us pioneer some kind of urban consolidation centre uh, and how we could actually deal with sort of the delivery of goods and freight around the region in a much more efficient manner. I think that would be fantastic to help decongest our roads and uh, help sort of address some of our emissions challenges as well. So really good basis of a, a response here. And if I can move to paragraph two of the recommendations, if that's agreed. Excellent. Okay, uh, last for the report, uh, and that's item eight, and that is David's presenting about the cross-country rail franchise consultation. Thank you, Jeff. You may or may not know the last time cross country reserves had to be in a line seat was 2002. The, the, the issue here is that actually cross country transfers couldn't actually serve many of the locations that we would like to go to in the south and west and south east. And, and these areas are highlighted in the long term rail strategy. So effectively, what we want is, is for the service tracks to be onto the pool. And that's what the consultation response focuses on. We haven't picked up all the questions in the consultation response. It's quite honest to say, the services have come to the public, the it's a massive interest in us all. And really, I think there's a number of questions on things like the service to the west of Plymouth and, and Guildhall. Well, I, I would say I'm not going to get interested in that. The focus is we need to get the service into Liverpool. One of the problems with cross country franchises at the moment, I do put it in, in the response, is they're using it to supplement. Uh, Local services around the likes of Birmingham in the peak hours. It's not what cross country is about, it's about long distance routes linking the likes of Liverpool with the rest of the country. And that really is the focus of the response. Now, I'm not happy to add any other comments you have into what's in there at the moment. Uh, there is one issue, we do have to have a response tomorrow. We are beyond the deadline date, but the DFT 
not as well connected as we should be, we deserve to be, and need to be. Um, we've done a lot to make sure we're getting new services. We heard earlier about the new service that we will be getting to Scotland um, and making sure that we get that and when it should be delivered. Loads of great work we've done with people in, in Wales, the Welsh Government, to make sure we're getting those services, not just in the North Wales, but in the South Wales. The only point of the compass now we will be lacking a direct link to is the South West and the South Coast of England. This is the opportunity to do it, so let's make sure what, again, If I can then move uh, at the second paragraph two um, and the recommendations accordingly, if that's agreed. Okay. Uh, item nine is public question time, and we've not got any public questions. Uh, and item ten is positions of statements, and we've got a couple of those, uh, and I want to sort of deal with each of those accordingly. The first one I want to just take uh, is with regards to um, the one that's come from Karen McDonald who's um, a resident from Rainford, is Karen here? I don't think she is. Um, I'm not going to read it out, it's available to everyone around the chamber. It's obviously referencing a reduction in a bus service and a decision that Arriva had taken around that. Um, obviously we'll give her uh, an appropriate response uh, about that and we'll also pass